everybody! In this third video on DCC EX, let's learn together how to program automations. Let's start with a brief recap of what we have already learned in the previous videos. It will be very useful later. DCC EX includes a feature called EX Rail to implement automations and animations. All the EX Rail configuration is contained in a file called myautomation.h, a file that we can modify with a basic text editor and program on the command station using EX Installer. Before we can program the automations, we need to define the objects that will be controlled by them. For sure, we will want to control the locomotives, defined using the roster function, and the turnouts, defined using the turnout function. Probably our automation will need to receive feedbacks from the layout, thanks to sensors that we can connect directly to the Arduino board pins, to external expanders, or via I2C bus. It is very important to understand how these objects must be referenced by the automation in EXRail. For the locomotives, we will use the DCC address. For the turnouts, their numeric ID. For the sensors, the virtual pin. The basic element of automation in EXRail is called sequence. A sequence is simply a list of things to be done in order. A sequence in the My Automation file has this structure. It starts with the word sequence and a numeric identifier. The identifier must be unique. Each sequence must have a different number. It contains a list of commands. It ends with the word done. Let's see a first example. This sequence with ID 1 closes the turnout with ID 1, selects the locomotive with address 3, sets speed 10 for this locomotive. A generic sequence can only be started by another sequence or when the command station boots. For this reason, in the X-Rail there are two particular types of sequences, which we will see are very useful, routes and automations. A route is a particular sequence that is made visible and therefore can be activated from a throttle. As the name suggests, it is designed to be able to define and activate a route with a click. For example, the entrance to the station. In Engine Driver, the routes are available in a dedicated menu. Let's see a real example. For convenience, instead of creating a real model railway, I will simulate it with GMRI. In this layout, there is a hidden station made up of four tracks, named A, B, C, and D, and the corresponding three turnouts. I want to define a route for the entrance on track C. This is my automation file, where I've already defined the turnouts. Let's program the new route. Looking at the layout, the entrance on track C requires switches 1 and 2 thrown, switch 4 closed. After programming the file on the command station, I can find the new route in Engine Driver. If I activate it, the position of the turnouts becomes the correct one for the entrance on track C. I can also move the turnouts manually. As soon as I activate the route again, they return to the correct position. Following the same steps, I could also program the routes for the entrance on the other station tracks. I just have to remember to give each route a different number. 
An automation is instead a particular sequence that is made visible to a throttle so that a user can hand over a loco. In an automation it is possible to insert commands, for example turning on the lights and speed 20 with forward direction, without specifying the address of the locomotive. The CCEX will send those commands to the locomotive to which we have assigned the automation. This allows us to program generic automations, which from time to time can be assigned to a particular train on our layout. In this example, you will also see the possibility of reading the status of a sensor. The add command, in fact, stops the sequence until the sensor with VPIN 4000 is activated. If we go back to the myautomation.h file, we notice two things. The VPIN 4000 is associated with the distance sensor that I configured in the last video. Routes and automations cannot have the same ID so I gave the new automation ID 5. Let's try the automation on this test track. First, select the locomotive in engine driver. Then go to the routes menu, where I can find the new automation. Note that the button label is not set as for the routes, but end off because by pressing it, the automation will be assigned to the locomotive that I'm controlling. The locomotive has correctly turned on the lights and advanced until the sensor was activated. Let's now replace the locomotive with another one to verify that I can actually assign the same automation to this one too. The last type of sequence I will talk about today is called on event, and is a particular sequence that is activated when a specific event occurs. In this example, the sequence is activated when the turnout with ID4 is thrown. The sequence turns on the red light of the signal with ID24, waits 2 seconds, and then activates the green light. This example gives me the opportunity to explain that in DCCEX it is possible to define signals connected directly to Arduino pins or via expanders. The signal I will use has a red LED connected to pin 24 and the green one to pin 25. Not having a yellow orange LED, I will configure this on pin 0. Let's check that the sequence works. I manually move turnout 4 the red LED lights up and after 2 seconds it goes off and the green one lights up. So far we implemented single sequences, whose actions are executed one after the other until the end. EXRail allows us to control the execution flow of automations in three ways. Through the use of conditionals, with the IF clause. For example, if sensor 4000 is active, then do an action, or if turnout 2 is closed, then do a series of actions, else do others. Through branching, using the call or follow instruction, it is in fact possible to call a sequence from another, or indicate the sequence to be executed at the end of the current one, by inserting delays and waits from simple fixed delays, for example 1 second, to random delays, from 2 to 5 seconds, to interruption of the sequence until a sensor becomes active or inactive. As you may have understood, EXRail is a powerful programming language. 
I recommend you to carefully read the documentation on the DCCX website, in particular the command reference page, where all the possible commands are listed. There are really so many. In conclusion of this video, I would like to know your opinion. Even software like JMRI or Rockrail support the development of automations, perhaps even more complex than what it is possible with the X-Rail. In which occasions do you think this feature of DCCX is useful? Leave me a comment. Thanks for watching this video and as always, have fun!